here's where I'm driving at. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have, to, have sort of categorized Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon's relationship as a love hate relationship where they're best buddies and they're really proud of what all they accomplished. And I got so much history and they couldn't have done it without each other. And so thankful and appreciative. And then the next time you see them, they hate each other's fucking guts and they were both a bum and they could have did it without the other one. Now I've never talked to either one about that, but that is certainly the way it's been categorized at different times. Have you heard, or were you under the same impression that it was a love hate relationship at times? So I get the, uh, blessing or curse or the grace or whatever it is. I have seen the promoter top talent relationship, not just Vince and Hulk. I didn't really have to guess about that, but, uh, I heard once upon a time, Jimmy Crockett and dusty Rhodes were the best of friends. And then there were some numbers that came in and they weren't so much the best of friends. And I am positive. It's sometimes, uh, Austin Idol was my old man, Jerry Jarrett's favorite wrestler in the world. And then other times they hated each other. And the same goes for Bill Dundee and look, my dad and Lawler were partners, but it wasn't all rosy all the time. That's the nature of the beast between the top guy and the promoter period. And so that's how I always perceived Hulk and Vince's relationship. So my question is, do you believe perhaps some of Hogan's motivation to doing a Monday night show was, yeah, we're going to stick it to Vince. For sure. That's where we fucked up. I mean, I, I mean look, I, Hulk, Hulk never told me that, but Hulk is a top talent and everything that goes with that ego driven. Um, you know, and I'm saying that in, in a positive way, but, but yes, that, Hulk wanted to make as much money as fast as he possibly could. So how do we do that? Oh man, if we come out of the gate, I'm getting a raise. If we start winning on Monday nights, if it doesn't work, I know they can't cut my pay. <sighs> what, what, why are you shaking your head? I know they can't cut my pay. It's just, I mean, the reality is it this was a way and listen, I've never talked to Hulk about this, but. If you know that they don't like each other and that it is contentious and that he left over money and he was frustrated with payoffs or, I mean, whatever other reason, top guys and promoters and owners don't get along, but now this is a way for me to prove that I don't need Vince McMahon. I can do this myself and hey, I don't even have to use my money to do it because let's not forget. He had tried to start a little promotion a time or two before, and now Here's a billionaire saying, well, we'll just pay you a bunch of guaranteed money. Just come do it here. Sounds like a win-win deal to me. Uh, especially given what was going on in his personal life. He's going through a divorce. He's looking to get some cash back in and, uh, and move on from that divorce. And so there's a lot of moving parts here, but it does feel like you ever watch Kirby your enthusiasm. I have watched, uh, but I'm not a regular watcher. You're familiar with the show. Yeah. Yes. So they have this store called Mocha Joe's coffee shop that they go to. And one day the main character, Larry David gets into a, what we'd call in the South, a pissing match with old Mocha Joe and Mocha Joe throws him out of the store and bans him on the way to the car. Larry realizes the suite right next door to Mocha Joe in the strip mall is available for lease. So he opens latte Larry's. <laughs> I love this. And he calls it a spite store. Larry had never ran a coffee shop. Larry was not interested in coffee. He just felt like he could do it better than <laughs> Mocha Joe and Mocha Joe's an asshole who was mean to him. So now I'm going to open a spite store to prove that I can do this better than Mocha Joe and put Mocha Joe out of business. Cause I don't like Mocha Joe and it was called a spite store. And when I hear this story and I look at it and I think, wait a minute, I understand from Bischoff's perspective, he's got the track record where he said, well, I went head to head with Vince McMahon and I beat him. So why couldn't I do it again? I had the support of one billionaire, just a different billionaire. We got the support of spike. We can do this. Bischoff's flaw of course is. Vince's company was on the ropes in 95. Y'all were running fucking high schools when nitro started. Now, fast forward in 2010, 
The WWE is now a publicly traded company. Vince McMahon's no longer a millionaire. Now he's a billionaire. It's going to be a little hard to gain market share on a guy who can pay anybody, whatever they want. That was not the case in 95. And by the way, nitro just was what it was until they opened up that checkbook. But now that we understand it's not millionaire versus billionaire, it's billionaire versus billionaire. This is a stack deck, but from Hogan's standpoint, I can't help, but think about him and Larry David <laughs> and then moving to Monday night. It's a uh, latte Larry's here on Monday. Is it not latte Larry's on Monday? I will say that again, th th this you're asking me a question about Hogan's mindset. Do you ever read the book E myth? No. About entrepreneurial mindset. And there's in one brain, there's an entrepreneur, there's a technician, and then there's a manager. All in one brain, it's a constant battle of you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you're gonna manage things and you know, manage the business, or you're gonna be a technician, and that's getting the work done. So, and I I say all that to say that I think in Hogan's mind, he wanted money. That was his priority. And like I said, I'm gonna negotiate a deal. And remember, his boss is Dixie. So that's the relationship, that's the incentive. How do I make more money? Well. That again, I, I wasn't obviously a part of any of those one-on-one -on -one discussions, but somehow, some way out of those discussions came, let's go Monday nights and do a special and Hey, let's go full-time Monday nights. And I believe maybe Hogan wanted to run the coffee shop as you alluded to, but I think at the very top of that priority is I want to make more money. And listen, I'm not saying, I mean, I understand that Hogan is business first and foremost, but it's been my experience that most spite stores fail. Sure. You open a new business, not because you want to hurt the other guy, but because you want to build your own as the yep. alternative in the hip hop community. They refer to this as pocket watching. Hey, I see how much money Vince McMahon's making on Monday. I bet we can too. Or mm. if he's making all that, we deserve our. Mm. Doesn't always work that way. You know, Bischoff has preached for a long time on 83 weeks. Uh, you can be less than you can be better than, or you can be different than, and frankly, there was no way that impact could have been better than, but they could have been different than, and things like the six sided ring made them different than, but if we're going to be on the same night with the same ring with the same old stars, now it's less than. And it didn't work. I, and I, hindsight's twenty twenty. but as not just looking over the notes, but in multiple conversations and not to jump ahead too far, but for 11 out of 12 months in 2013, I was negotiating to buy back majority interest. So I knew the numbers better than anybody in the world. That was my job. I'm not patting myself on the back. It was my job to know things and look at things. But when you really look at things, we change, we transformed, I say, we TNA, the product transformed the alternative to WWE light on January 4th. 